finally here for UMass football. Today, the season begins for the Minutemen in Statesboro, Georgia. And welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Sling TV. We are at Paulson Stadium, where today the Eagles of Georgia Southern host Massachusetts. And alongside former Ohio State Buckeye Dustin Fox, I'm Bill Roth. Welcome you to Statesboro for today's game. Back to the depth charts, kind of confusing. A lot of new faces from a season ago, but they're pumped up and they're going to kick it off here at Statesboro. Season finally underway for UMass, which won the toss and deferred the option to the second half. A fair catch called for by Kennedy. His teammate took it, but it will be a elected to play with its road uniforms on its home field. And Shy Wirtz, the first play. It will be seeing a lot of this man today. J.D. King, the first carry of the day. And he has a big hole up the middle and gets ahead to the 42-yard line. He's coming off a career high of 196 yards in his last outing. And this young man, it's pretty remarkable. What do they do offensively? What do we call this offense that Wurtz runs so effectively? Well, some would call it big, big day ahead of him. That position there, that Mike linebacker is so huge against a triple option team. Second and 10, Wurtz to the air. And he completes his first attempt at midfield to Malik Murray. Managing that game based on how the game uh, flows. They're a good team on third down this season. They get a lot of these third and shorts. And King converts to the 47 yard line most popular players on the team and one of the hardest workers by the way from the 47 of umass Wirtz has a man wide open and again it is murray spreading to the end zone touchdown When we chatted with the staff this week, you mentioned it. Want to get more involved in the passing game, you're going to see a young freshman safety to Ray Powell, number 21, bite up in that coverage scheme, and it's a bust. And of course, you see Malik Murray get behind the defense. That's an easy pitch and catch. Nice touch on the pass from Shy Wartz. And a nice start for the Georgia Southern Eagles. 75-yard touchdown drive has Georgia Southern on the early lead as Wirtz throws another touchdown pass. The Eagles jump in the lead early. <laughs> know who they're going to see. That's right. Well, Powell, who was the defensive back on that play, is going to have a chance to redeem himself on this kickoff from near the two or three-yard line. And Powell sprints to the near sideline, and he gets to about the 27-yard line. Yeah, the big question over the last couple of weeks in Amherst gives them the most experience from an operational stand standpoint. That's why he will start this ball game. He's a second generation player. His daddy was a quarterback here. And on first down, they run the ball to Ellis. Long dose of Merriweather this afternoon because in, in chatting with Coach uh, Walt Bell this week, he's going to carry as many times as he can handle in this game. Merriweather gets it again, and he gets thrown down shy of the 21-yard line. Well, I mentioned that Mike Fallon's dad was the quarterback here at UMass, way back in Daddy. Well, Mike Fallon's going to have to put the ball in the air here on this third and long. I know they want to run the football as much as possible, but he's going to have to make a play on third and nine. Quick throw, and it's caught at the 30-yard line by O.C. Johnson, but he's knocked down. Their first starts this year. A lot of inexperience, certainly in the back end. That was one thing that kind of concerned Coach Scott Sloan, the defensive coordinator. Pun off the side of the foot of Georgopoulos. Does not touch a player. Rolls dead near the 40-yard line. It'll be down there. Have you ever seen a punter down his own punt? That's exactly that's what kinda, happened on that play. That's kind of rare. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it was blocked. No, he just mishit it. Just mishit it, yeah. 
That is just bizarre. We've all done that every now and then off yeah. the long tee, right? <laughs> it's like me in, on a long par five. So Georgopoulos downs his own punt. Wesley Kennedy gets his first touch of the game. Breaks one tackle and slithers to the 34-yard line before he's knocked down by Ruin over there. That's the thing. When you play an option attack, the eye discipline as we talked about with that last touchdown is so vital for the guys in the inside. The safeties and linebackers have to read their keys. Eagles go tempo and a broken tackle again for Kennedy into the secondary and ahead to the 19-yard line. Tough spot to be if you're number 38, Tanner Davis. Watch Davis here with the safety comes up. You got to give him a, a one way go. Pretty good job getting him on the ground. That's a tough tackle to make. Wirtz on the move and throws it on the run. And it's caught by Hood. And he's ahead to the 13 yard line, is Caleb Hood. So a little tempo here now for yeah, Coach Lunsford and his team. And already throwing the football a little bit more in this game, <laughs> testing this. UMass secondary. Wurtz throws back to his left, and it's caught inside the 10-yard line near the sticks. That was Anderson that uh, made the tackle on Hood on the play. It'll be first down and goal on the seven. Wart's going to let it go to the end zone, and it is nearly intercepted. That was a really good defensive play over there by the cornerback. Uh, Wallace did well played. You think they're playing fast only to keep them off their heels at this point? They can't sub. They can't do anything defensively personnel-wise. I think they want to see their conditioning. It's a team that hasn't played a game yet. There's a good job up front. Kennedy got the carry. So they're going to find out and make a lot of adjustments, I'm imagining, as we go throughout this ball game. Third and goal on the seven now for the Eagles. Words to the air again, looking for his second touchdown of the game, and he's got it. Beautifully done to the tight end, Bo Johnson. I said to Bob DeBest, the offensive coordinator of the Eagles yesterday afternoon, how much do you use your tight ends? He says, they need to be involved a lot more. And here he is, Bo Johnson. I wrote it down in my notes. And that was all set up by eye control again, uh, Bill. When you look at it's a little like why hide. They block down, they just sneak him out the backside. Rainer adds the extra point and 14-0 the score already. And let's see if UMass and Powell can get the momentum turned around just a little bit on the kickoff return. This is his second chance. And he was brought down near the 10. The ball is on the field, but they're claiming a football. All they've had is one live scrimmage in this fall camp of 17 practices. So I'm sure there's some heavy breathing on the sidelines. Hopefully their offense will see if they can get them a first down or two. Fallon to the air. And he's got a receiver open, and that'll be Emelis. So they had to scale everything back and prepare for this game in just 10 days, as you mentioned, Bill. Here is Merriweather. Trying to get an open space. And I don't want to say vanilla football, but you haven't had a lot of time to put a lot of things in. There's a lot of new faces on this offense. They're going to give the ball to him again, and he gets ahead for about a yard on the play. To show you how important he is and how popular he is, a junior college transfer comes in. He was voted one of the five team captains on this UMass team before he ever played. up this, uh, this offseason, that's going to help their running attack. Passing situation now, though, for Mike Fallon. Nope, they keep it on the ground. And it's defended well. And they'll be kicking it away to Wesley Kennedy, the return man. That's better. Hey, great effort on the second one. Kennedy takes the fair catch on the 35. We'll step aside. When we come back, Shy Wirtz, Georgia Southern, back on offense. That one as well. So that's going to be a fun one. Top offense in the country versus the top defense in the country. 
Georgia Southern's had the ball twice and has scored twice thanks to this guy. Wirtz got his first hit of the day. The ball is free, but they're going to say he's down, and that's the first time that UMass really was able to get a shot on him in there. Here's a new formation. The quadruple I. The quadruple I for them. They'll shift out of that. Wirtz on the option. A beautiful late pitch. That was magnificent as he was going down. He's able to flip the ball to Wesley Kennedy. That is Fabulous pitch. Just clinic quality. Watch, he's going to fake the handoff up the middle there to Kennedy. Comes out, he's got now lead blockers down the field. And the late pitch at the end to Wesley Kennedy. Beautiful, beautiful play. You see right there, Jarrell Johnson, 22. He's caught between a rock and a hard. You need an extra body to get out there to play the edge. They're at the 41-yard line already. Now they run it, and he pitches it with his left hand. He can pitch it with either hand, and it's a big run for King. Inside the 30-yard line, ahead of the 26-yard line for J.D. King. You know what they're doing? You, you mentioned this, the quick up-tempo, but... Remember what they told us, that, that Georgia Southern doesn't run a whole lot of different plays. It's just a lot of window dressing. It just looks like a bunch of different plays. That's a little shovel pass to Darius Lewis. And he's got another first down. That's a good start. Here in the first quarter from the 16-yard line. They string that out, and that's defended absolutely perfectly. That time, Powell came up and made the play. Good. He's fast. He's got football savvy. Football IQ comes, as you mentioned, from a great high school program. He's going to be a good one. Look at Wirtz. Look at those feet. Although the ball is on the ground, and it is a loose football. And the Minutemen come up with it, a rare Georgia Southern turnover. Wirtz was a magician with his feet. But they he lost it. the ball, and it was at Georgia Southern is ball security. They work on it every single day. This is one of the greatest teams in terms of turning the football over or not turning the football over over the last three seasons. In fact, Bill, the last 26 games, only 20 tur turnovers. And Georgia Southern. So UMass will take over on its own four-yard line. Not a lot of running room inside there for Merriweather. Let's go to the studio, and here's Kevin. 14-0 on their home field here in a game that wasn't scheduled till 10 days ago. Oh, and Merriweather gets driven back into the end zone. They'll give him forward progress to the two-yard line, and it's going to bring up a third and very long. That was Jalen Jackson coming in to make the stick. Now take a look at this. Jalen Jackson right there in the middle, and Todd Bradley as well. You know, Jackson's getting his first start. Got a lot of... They're going to take a look for targeting. Interesting. Which On could the be. They changed them a couple years ago. But now they're either going to confirm the call. Take a look here. Let's see where it's at. Right there. It would be on number 11, Todd Bradley, as he comes in first on Merriweather, kind of drops the, the crown of his helmet, and that's that's an indicator for targeting. So they're going to take... After video review, personal foul, targeting with the crown of the helmet, defense number 11. 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Number 11 is disqualified from the contest. Please reset the game clock for 44 seconds. 44 seconds on the game clock, please. So for time. So that moves the ball out to the 17-yard line, and it gives UMass a first down. Allen was thinking about taking a deep shot, but everyone he's covered. And the young man making his first start is going to get his first sack of his career. Back to the 12-yard line is 70 degrees here today. Perfect fall afternoon here in coastal Georgia. Quarterback. It is. It is Josiah Johnson, his first snap. And Johnson gets tripped up. But right, he gets ahead to about the 18-yard line. Maybe this is a decision of the coach to get Johnson involved in this off last year. So he's going to play a little bit of quarterback, a little bit of inline tight end, a little bit of H-back all over the field. 
It's about third down and eight now as Fallon returns at quarterback. And Merriweather gets ahead to the 20-yard line. A pickup of a yard for Merriweather, who's playing in his first game. They get a stop. They got a turnover. That was great for their defense. See if they can get a punt here, get some field position, and put your defense out there with a chance. Before the snap to Georgeopolis, a flag is thrown, and Delay of game. it took too much time. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Get the fluids going. They've been out there a lot this afternoon. So Georgeopolis will be kicking from his goal line. They were very concerned about kick coverage. Kennedy is a dangerous return man. He will not get his hands on this one as it goes out of bounds. Turn the football over. No one does, by the way, at Georgia Southern. See if he can redeem himself with his drive. Words to throw from midfield. Nicely delivered. That'll be enough for the first down to Emil Smith. Throughout camp, throughout these first couple of games, you don't get to two and one winning all these close games if you don't got poise from the quarterback position. Quick pitch with the right hand. This is the first carry of the day for speedy Matt LaRoche, and he powers his way. He showed more than just speed there, didn't he? Inside the 25. They don't call him speedy for nothing. <laughs> Boy, have you seen somebody stick their foot in the ground like this and just cut back? Or at the end, ahead of the 24-yard line, another explosive play. Boy, they've been picking up some big yardage plays, haven't they? They have. Talked about those explosive ones coming into this game. They were trying to get eight in a game. Nearly there already through the first half. Logan Wright got a couple, the junior from Jack Point. On a late two-point conversion that was failed. Wurtz fakes the pitch, and he's dragged down near the 19-yard line. He got about three yards from under center, but still the principles and the eye control, all of that remains the same. They didn't do a very good job against Army, though, defensively. It's a much different UMass team, though. And they beefed up their defensive line. All these guys now over 300 pounds. On the move, Logan Wright turns the corner. Part of his jersey ripped away, but he's got the first down near the five-yard line. Did I be, see a piece of white jersey being ripped off of him? I think it might have been a towel. Maybe that's what it was. Something got pulled Something away got from pulled him. Something got off. I think it's a piece of his T-shirt underneath there. Grabs it. Is that one of those, like, cutaways like they had back in the, the 80s? <laughs> the jerseys would rip off the back? Yeah. There's a little bit of his... Un been an excellent red zone team. Over the last few years, this year they have struggled a bit. They want to score more in the red zone. Let's see what happens on this occasion. And Wirtz gets dragged down on the first down. He played tight end and fullback for 2016, 17, 18. Didn't play last year. He was banged up. Second and goal. Wirtz throws it, and he's got his man wide open. And it is his third touchdown of the game. Bo Johnson wide open. just comes out the backside and there's nobody in coverage they're, they're all staring in the backfield and all this as we talked about window dressing kind of cr creates some confusion for the guys in the secondary and linebackers they're all kind of staring at shy words like they're watching a, a Houdini, like a Houdini trick or something it's all like illusion and they don't know what's going on all of a sudden out of the backside Bo Johnson comes on that deep crossing route and beautiful touch by shy words Eagles off to a hot start today, obviously. Here is the kick return for UMass. This is O.C. Johnson, head to about the 18-yard line. Now let's go to the studio once again. Here's Kevin. End second quarter. All right, Kevin, thanks. Here UMass fans want to see something positive happen. Let's see if Ellis Merriweather can make that happen. A line of scrimmage. That's what Coach Bell would like to build. There's a play fake for Mike Fallon. He's got some room to run, doesn't he? And he spins ahead for about an eight-yard gain ahead to the 27-yard line. He said, I would love to be what Wisconsin is. I'd love to be what Iowa is. In fact, I'd like to be what the Tennessee Titans are. In they Indiana. used to get these guys in there, and that's their goal. They want to be, as you said, Iowa or Wisconsin. 
their strength coach, really talented young uh, coach, Matt Shadid, helped these guys get a lot bigger and stronger. Another punting opportunity for George Georgiopoulos. High, but short. And Georgia Southern, which has enjoyed just about everything today. From the 40, here's the option to the left side. And Wirtz lowered his shoulder. There was a collision near the 49-yard line. Yeah, that was a big-time hit coming in here. This guy kind of gets blocked into him. He does. It's Noah Boykin. Noah Boykin. Yeah, the transfer from Notre Dame is getting blocked in there at the end. That's Dexter Carter, the wide receiver, blocking Boykin. He and really never saw the field at Notre Dame. And that guy had an offer to come play for Coach, uh, Coach Bell out of high school and decided to go the Fighting Irish. A procedure penalty, a false start on Georgia Southern. The last game, I should say, three for seven. And that was it. I mean, they've already thrown well more than that in the first half alone. Wirtz kept that play alive. Wirtz cuts back. Wirtz on the move, and that is vintage number one here at Georgia Southern. That play right there shows you why he'll go down as one of the greatest players ever to wear blue and gold at this school. Just look at this athletic ability. Breaks a tackle, and then he decides to cut up field. Bursts north and south. And then just kind of finishes the run. Nearly gets tripped up. What a great athlete. Shy Wirtz is so explosive. And we, speaking of explosive, we talk about the plays. Wanted to get eight today. They've already got nine. Coach DeBest should be very happy with that one. With the left hand, the pitch to J.D. King. And he gets dragged down, but it's another positive play. Speed, guys. And you get those players on the edge, that can really can create some challenges for a defense. UMass is going to call its first timeout. It's a smart call. With 4.06 to play. We'll step aside as well. Catch your breath, Minutemen defenders. Back after this. Last five meetings with Dallas. Looking forward to see Andy Dalton take over that Cowboys offense. Ball's on the 18 for Wirtz. They've been living in the red zone. And J.D. King struggles for the first down. See, there's a two for the Minutemen. Wirtz hands it off on first down. And it's a nine-yard run for Wesley Kennedy who grew up just about 45 minutes away from here in suburban Savannah. He got nine on that play. Now spotted on the five, second down and one. Remember, Wirtz has already tied a career high with three touchdown passes today. Here is King, he's got the first down and he's ahead inside the three to the two yard line. just grounding and pounding this UMass defensive front. Football game. I'm not talking about a scrimmage. I'm talking about a game where you got to be on the field for 11 play drives and then go out and come back out again for 11 play drive. Here is King trying to find a hole, but the minute men are there. Nothing doing for JD. Exactly what he did right there as they create the loss. From the five, second down for Wirtz and Georgia Southern. Wirtz sprints towards the corner and leaps in for the touchdown. He is orchestrating this offense beautifully today and a little hop into the end zone. Does the little layup there. Again, you get the misdirection. Everyone's blocking down to the right side. He spins out. It's a naked bootleg is really what it is. And he's got an option to pass. And the linebacker in that play turns around and tries to plaster, excuse me, the safety was Tanner Davis, 38. 
and he, as he plasters his wide receiver, turns his back to the quarterback, Shy Wirtz sees that and says, I'm just going to run in. And it was an easy touchdown right to the corner of the end zone for Shy Wirtz. He's now attributed for all four touchdowns today, throwing th three through the air. Is Roberson, he'll be fighting the sun to field this kickoff. The final few minutes of this first half. And he'll field it from the one yard line. And Roberson has room. And he's ahead of the 37 yard line. That may be the biggest play of the day for UMass. But what's coming up at halftime? Let's go to the studio. Once again, here's Kevin. Indeed, Bill, coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, we'll have an uptest performance today. And, of course, we'll have more on Notre Dame going down to the wire against Louisville and South Bend, all coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, Bill. All right, Kevin, final 91 seconds here of this first half in Statesboro. Fallon to put it to the air. And they try to set up the little screen to Merriweather. And he gets ahead to about the 41-yard line. We think the strategy is here now for UMass. I think get to halftime, regroup, hydrate, and try to come out in the second half and tell your players at halftime that uh, it's a 0-0 game and you try to win the second half. Well, they do have two timeouts left. The kick return may have given them a little bit of a spark. Let's see what happens on second and six. Fallon gets out of trouble, and he has some room. He'll have the first down, and Fallon making his first start ahead to the 40-yard line. And that'll stop the clock as he's out of bounds on the 38-yard line. I think that now changes the philosophy. You were, in my mind, just trying to get to halftime. Now you got yourself in a position to maybe go down here and get some points before half. I know they don't have a, a great kicker, but once they get inside the distance of about 42 yards, that's about where they feel confident they could make an attempt. You know, Fallon's looked pretty good. He, yeah. He's completed all three of his pass attempts. He's not turned the ball over. Right? And they've gotten good heat on him. He's gotten out of there and hurt him with his legs here in this first half a little bit. From the 38. They set up another delayed screen or a crossing route. It's dropped by Melvin Hill. Merriweather tries to turn the corner, and he got ahead for about a yard. And a tumble of sorts in Amherst. Third down and nine. A deep shot. Incomplete. Oh, you got to punt this. From the 37, it's fourth down and nine. That's Edwards, the tight end, going in motion. They bring some heat on Fallon. He's able to deliver the ball right on the money, and that should be enough for the first down to Emelis. Boy, that was right at the sticks. He nearly gets past the line. He does, in fact, and you know, he sits down. Great job by Fallon. Now they're going to go hurry up. They've got to with only one timeout. That's Receiver got pushed out of bounds. No Boy. flag. <laughs> that looked like pass interference if I've ever seen it. Trailing by 28. This has been a good drive for them. It started with a good kickoff return. Fallon has hurt Georgia Southern with his legs, and he's thrown the ball well. A pump fake, and he's got a man open if he can find him. He's nope. to take out, take it out of bounds. And he does. Yeah. When he looks at the tape, he'll see that he had Turner open, but again, it's easier to see from us up here. Right, and I would say this, they can talk to his guys about and come out in the second half and play better football. So Cameron Carson, who's a redshirt freshman kicker from Loudon, well, he is a left-footed kicker, and he is about to make his collegiate debut. Cameron Carson. First action for UMass. Off the upright, no good. Well, that's kind of how this first half has been for the Minutemen. Really well done drive to give themselves a chance. Put them in position as you take a look at the kick. Just off that left upright. Sometimes those will doink in, but no good there. Well, Carson will have another opportunity at some point. Here it is 28-0, Georgia Southern with the lead. 
Kevin and Jim Mora coming up. Guys, what you got for us? I think they can build off of here in the second half as they're going to get the football. Second half underway and looking up into the sun, the short kick and Powell will reverse field. This is Johnson and Jermaine Johnson gets out to the 30 yard line. Well, that's a good kickoff return as well. Two in a row for him. Yeah, they call him OC, his nickname. OC Johnson, that, that was a really most. And Fallon in his first start has been very poised back there. Would you agree? I would. And a slant thrown behind and intercepted on the deflection by Canteen. There is the first turnover of the day by UMass and Canteen is still coming. And finally knocked down on the 20. Well, it wasn't a well-thrown ball, but it should have been caught nonetheless. It was a little high, but this, this pass by Embolus should be caught. It's a quick slant. He's got his target. Again, a little high, but you get two hands on it. As, as a Division I wide receiver, you got to catch those. You do. And I'm sure he wishes he had that one back because you know, even if you drop that, but he kind of tips it up and allows the defender to, to make the interception. And then Canteen's just showing what he does best. He's, he's learning. He's growing and becoming a much better corner. That was a great play. And the 33-yard return sets him up in the red zone to start the third quarter. And here comes Wirtz. Oh, and he's dragged down on the horse collar from the backside, and that will be the penalty on the Will side linebacker, Mike Ruin. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 33. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Solinders, and that's one that kind of has you holding your breath in a game that you kind of already have in hand. The last thing that Georgia Southern needs at this point is to lose number one. Oh, no, huh? goodness. Here's King, and he gets to the five. Yeah, I know this game's 28 nothing, Bill. Words from the five. He's already tied a career high with three touchdown passes. That was nearly a fourth, but it was broken up nicely by Wallace. He's Passing situation now on third and goal for Wirtz, and they did not get this play off. It appears Whistle stopped the play before the snap. Ball start, off and number 51. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Aaron Dowdell, the leading midline, move him out of the pocket, give him a couple different routes on different levels. Where's the tight end? Bo Johnson has caught two passes already today for touchdowns. Tight end in motion. He goes in motion. Wirtz throws it behind the intended receiver, and it's incomplete. He tried, and you force a field goal. I think that's a, a victory for this UMass defense. It's going to be a 27-yard attempt for Alex Rayner, Georgia Southern kicker. And he knocks that one through. And so the touchdown is avoided. The in Cowboys. Should be a fun Sunday and Monday night. Dylan Lewis is going to kick off this time for Georgia Southern. High and short. Fair catch called for, and they got a ticket at the 29-yard line. You're going to give uh, UMass to come in here. Conference play resumes for Georgia Southern here next week. Well, you were in Myrtle Beach a couple weeks ago. Saw them uh, handily beat. Arkansas State. They look really good. They've got a young quarterback, a redshirt freshman that's dynamite. Bumble. Ball was loose, but it was covered by UMass. I think Coastal's legit. It clears. One of the great college football nicknames. It is. Yeah, that, the division is uh, wide open for sure. Here is Merriweather. After the three-yard loss when the ball was put on the ground, he got a yard or so of it. Time starts to gel together. You know, remember, this is really the first time this offensive line has played together. They only had five scholarship offensive linemen on the roster last year. Fallon on third down dumps it off to Jared Cole. And he gets to near the 35-yard line. Shy of the first down, and UMass will have to punt it away. A lot of guys experience in this game 
pull off a true freshman. To this staff's ability to recruit in Maryland because yeah. that's where Walt was. That's correct. A lot of seeds have been planted there in the D.C. area. George Georgeopolis. That's a good one. With another punt. George has not gotten a roll today, has he? <laughs> Out of bounds on the 27-yard line. Back to... Georgia Southern's offense back on the field on the 27. And Wirtz on a collision. Oh, what a hit. No flag thrown there. And a tremendous job to hold on to the ball by Murray. And that was Powell who delivered the hit. Powell made a pow on that play. That he was did. a big-time hit. By Terry Powell. Are they going to look at this? I think they are. Uh, Maybe not. Well, it, the one side of the field said second down. And now they got it right. There we go. Now maybe they buzz down. The previous play is under video review for targeting. Well, we've already had one player ejected from today's game for. Well, from that angle, you can't tell. It looks like his head was in front. I, I can't believe Murray hung on to that. There's the real-time look. I don't think that's targeting Bill. I think, I it, I think he, I think it's shoulder, head in front. I think because the receiver's head kind of snapped back a little bit, it looked like more. After video review, there's no targeting on the play. It was a catch for a first down. I think they got the call right. There was a sweet play on. From the 37-yard line. It's another completion, by the way, for Shai Wirtz, who's having one of his best days as a passer. Murray again, and he's ahead to the 41-yard line. That's Murray's fourth catch of the day. He's averaging over 21 yards a reception. He had a 47-yard touchdown in the first quarter to get things going for Georgia Southern. You have a legal participation here, I think. No flag is thrown. Wirtz is able to connect it this time to the receiver. Just near the first down marker. What'd you see? Boy, there was about three defensive linemen running off the field. They were on the field at the snap. I don't know if the officials missed it, but there definitely were more than 11 guys. Here's Wirtz, gets out of trouble, and then slides back to the initial line of scrimmage. They are playing super fast, are they not? We've seen them yeah. run the option. We've seen them use the bobsled formation for Bob DeBest. We've seen a lot of everything today from Wirtz. Now he throws it on the run, and it's incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver, and again, Wallace had the coverage on the play. I, I must say, after you know the first half, the defense for you, Georgia Southern into a third and uh, ten, third and long. Well, you know, they probably were not happy with the way they played in the first half. Not. They know they can be better. Well, their offense did them no favors as well, keeping them out there with all the three and outs. Third and ten. Wirtz has a good pocket, misfires, but he did get hit again. Oh, he got crushed. Big hit. Well, a helmet comes off, so then I think that was uh, Billy Wooden right there. Big old number 42 in the middle, so uh, you force a punt. Good job by UMass to start the second half, put it in a tough spot. They force a field goal in the red zone, and now here force a punt of Georgia Southern. Here is the punt return. They've done a nice job on this kick return, but we do have a penalty marker thrown on the play. Slow it down. There were two fouls by the receiving team, illegal substitution. There were more than 12, more than 11 players on the field at the snap. That penalty is declined. During the return, holding number 33, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, he was hey. continues. They have had seemingly drive start after drive start inside their own 20. This one on the 13 for Mike Fallon. 
Try to set up the little screen to the right side to Evelis. And it's the From the 17, they'll call it the 16. Second and seven. Fallon, the play fake. And he dumps it short to his tight end, Taylor Edwards. I think they Third and three now for, uh, from the 20. Let's see if Fallon and UMass can move the sticks. Here comes the blitz, and it's incomplete. Well, they set the heat that time, and they'll force the punt for the UMass team once again. Busy day for George Georgopoulos. <laughs> They've only crossed midfield one time today. And they had a field goal attempt at the end of the first half that hit the upright. Kennedy calls for the fair catch and takes it near his 40-yard line. And Georgia Southern will. Eagles will start on their 40. And Wirtz slides ahead. Got about five. They still have App State to play. Their big rival. That game will be here. South Alabama, Troy. They run a cute little reverse to Wesley Kennedy. And lots of grass in front of him. And Wesley Kennedy will score. There wasn't a Minuteman, Minuteman defender within, I don't know, 20 yards. Great, great illusion by Shy Wirtz there on that little end around. And Kennedy shows off that speed. He is really, really fast. Remember, he came to Georgia Southern as a wide receiver. So he does still a little bit of that on the edge, but playing a lot more running back now. But great play, cool to have to put on that scouting, you know, card in practice. One more thing to prepare for. Right. Fair catch called for. And they'll take it on the 28-yard line as Taylor Edwards called for the fair catch. Where college football is watched, Nacho's Party Packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. 6.39 to go. And he puts one foot out of bounds, one foot in bounds, and then he touches the ball. The kick is out of kick bounds. kick is out of bounds. Right. So it's a great, smart play by O.C. Johnson. Got him some extra yardage. Josiah Johnson in the game at quarterback. He played one snap in the first half. He got ahead for a couple. He so I, I love that uh, that awareness there from O.C. Johnson. Here's a quick throw to O.C. He makes the catch. Fights for the first down. The penalty. Good awareness. Another new quarterback. It is Will Koch. His first snap. And Koch. A refreshing run across to the 47-yard line. He took a little bit of a late hit. No flag on the play. Koch is a pro-style quarterback out of Niceville, Florida. Up in the Was the starter all last season. After the gain of eight by Koch, Johnson back in. And number 16 flips the pass to the tight end, Edwards. And he's ahead to about one. And they'll play him all over the place. And right now they're using him as a quarterback. Good protection for Johnson, but he overshoots his intended receiver, Samuel Emelis. And it's going to be fourth down and three. But at this point, you likely go for it, no? What do you have? Fourth down from the 46. Johnson stumbled a little bit, made the throw, and it's a catch. Hill with the one-handed reception. He's got the first down. What a catch by Hill on the outside. Are you kidding me? He's falling down. Johnson barely gets it off. He stumbles there, falling backwards, and then he does a little Odell Beckham Jr. One hand at a spin, dipsy do in bounds. What a play. Concentration by Melvin Hill. He was just a special teams player a season ago. Played all 12 games, but didn't really see a lot of snaps. Didn't record a stat as a wide receiver. It's a chance here to make a play and makes a big one on fourth and three. From the 34, a play fake for Johnson. 
He's hit as he throws, and that is going to be intercepted. Did Bird hang on? I think he dropped it. I think it hit the ground. I do, too. They call it an interception at the moment, but we will take a look. Did Bird hang on to that? I, I think it hit the ground, yeah. I, I saw it from up here, Bill. He tries. It's an easy interception, and he goes to try and come, come down with the ball. You see it hit the ground. Watch to see if he hit the. Yep, incomplete. This will be the best look. No, yes, doubt, sir. no doubt about it. That's a break for UMass. About that in the team meetings, though? I think that uh, his teammates will let him hear more about it than his coaches will, if you know what I'm saying. Second down from the 34 yard line for Josiah Johnson. Hands it off to Merriweather, and that's the back that they wanted to see. Look at him stay on his feet. They're going to roll him down, but you can see like a freight train rolling down the tracks out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Merriweather is going to be a fine, fine addition to this UMass offense. Once they get him rolling behind that big offensive line, let's see if he was down. Good cut there in the hole, then a spin. His elbow is, yeah, his yeah. forearm is down, but... I do like the awareness by him to, to continue to play throughout the down. And yeah, he is down there, a little short of the first down. But again, this is probably in, in a real situation, the best drive this offense has had outside of the two minute drill. Snaps a bit low. Johnson flips it, and that one is intercepted. Sam Kennerson, the free safety. Kind of read the eyes of Josiah Johnson for the pick. Boy, he had Pilata wide open. If he just puts another six inches on this pass, Pilata would be walking into the end zone. Instead, lights are on as dusk sets here in Georgia. Nice job to stay on his feet by King. Good balance there, and he's had to about them. For the players to practice, not knowing who you're going to play, when you're going to play, if you're going to play. It takes some determination. Little flip to Darius Lewis. And that was defended well by UMass, so it'll bring up third down. Yeah, this season is so unusual. may not look anything like the schedule that you actually play. How many schedules have we seen from these conferences? <laughs> I like, know. We've had three Big Ten schedules. Ward's going to try to pick this up with his legs, and he has the first down ahead of the 20. A, ter a terrific running back. He's a quarterback, by the way, playing like a running back. This is LaRoche. Good tackle by Josh Wallace on the edge. LaRoche Second big tackle for yeah. him today. LaRoche looked like he was going to kind of put the burner. Minnesota next Saturday at 7.30 on ABC. To the fourth quarter we go. Warm-ups, don't they? They almost look like they're uh, like synchronized swimmers or something. They're just doing everything in motion, and they practice it. It's repetition time and time again as you get a flag here. Yeah, good point. There's been no opportunities like this game to get your backups in and let them get some of those reps. And certainly since uh, Shy Wartz has been the starting quarterback for you know, the last four years, there have not been a lot of chances for backups. They run the ball to Logan Wright. And he has the first down. So even on third and five, they get yet another explosive running play ahead of the 41-yard line. Wright is... Tomlin hands it off again to Wright, and he gets ahead for a couple. It is still unusual, even for long-standing... Georgia Southern fans, and even for those of us that have just watched a lot of games that have played on this field, to see this team wearing the white jerseys. <laughs> they didn't have uniforms to wear, so they said, hey, we'll make the switch. I kind of like the look. It's a little change up. LSU wears white at home, right? Dallas Cowboys yeah. wear white at home. This is the first time Georgia Southern's done it. Tomlin goes down near the 42-yard line. Let's go to the studio once again and say hi to Kevin. That's Sports Center like to top see. 10, right? Look at that. That was great. While we were gone, they uh, reviewed a play here. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. 
offense number 58. 15 yard penalty, replay second down. Okay, if you're a backup, you're not used to running it all the time. Those things happen. Here's Tomlin out of the gun, and they're going to keep it on the ground to Matt Speedy LaRoche. You think that this would have been a much different type of game had UMass played one game before that, don't you? I really do, especially watching this team in the second half. You on this Saturday afternoon, a game that no one thought would be played. We didn't know this was even a possibility until 10 days ago when Appalachian State had to postpone its game here scheduled for this week. Well, Georgia Southern was going to fake a punt. No, I don't think they were going to fake it. I think <laughs> they, they just – smart play. Anthony Outside, Beck is the punter. Defense, number 29, jumped in the neutral zone and caused an offensive play to react. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So now instead of fourth and seven, it will – And Beck with his first punt. Pretty one. Really nice. Should have let that one go. Fair catch on the four. This is where Josiah Johnson and the UMass Minutemen will start. Another drive starting deep in UMass territory. This has been the story of the day for field position. Running it on first and down. But because just the lack of production and lack of really plays, they haven't had that many opportunities. They give it to him again. Georgia Southern again. They're winning the battles up front. That was part of your goalpost, and you're, you're forced to throw here with Josiah Johnson now in at quarterback. So let's see what he's got. Johnson lets it go and delivers it on the money for the first down ahead to the 23 yard. And a great throw by Johnson. That was a good throw. Out of the end zone. First down pass now for him. Hit as he throws, and he dumps it off the wise again. Nineteen on that two deep slash three deep that they put out for this game today. Second down, and we'll call it nine for Josiah Johnson. Got a blitz coming. He Breaks. gets out of there. He's got room to run. Try to stiff on the linebacker and. A little bit of a seam to step up in and gives him a chance here now to pick up this third down. Merriweather on third and two picks up the first down ahead to the 34-yard line. Midway through the fourth quarter, UMass trying to avoid the shutout here on the road. Merriweather dragged down. It has been really this offensive line. You know, they've, they've already put the weight on, but they've got to develop and, and mesh together. Now they, they have more scholarship offensive linemen on the roster. First man was covered, so Johnson gets out of there with it. Got ahead for a couple of yards, ahead to about the 37-yard line before Watkins hauls him down. Versions, and we'll see if they can convert again here on third down. The last one was a great throw from Josiah Johnson. Third and seven on the 36. Can Johnson deliver again? Yes, but shy of the first down. And so it'll be fourth down. You know, Johnson's a product of the bowl school over. What would they do with him and Fallon and uh, Will Koch, who's a Who's the freshman who came in He's earlier today? He's probably the future, don't you think, Bill, of this UMass football team? He's the kind of the prized recruit. Here is Hood on the punt return, and Hood has fresh legs, and Hood is on the move. Tries to cut back, and they wrestle him out of bounds near the 22-yard line. Caleb Hood out of McDonough, Georgia. Download the app. Dustin, I know you follow this. The Korean Zombie, 16 and five yeah, in his good. career. He's pretty good. Under five minutes to go. That's Gerald Green. The last couple times in the red zone, but when you've got Shy Wartz at quarterback, there's not much you can do. 
There's Green, and he runs ahead. They'll mark him down to the 13-yard line as we turn under four minutes to go. Let's go to the studio once again to Kevin. 337, UCF on top. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, that had shootout written all over it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Tomlin fakes the handoff. Is he going to throw? No, he's going to try to run, but it's defended exceptionally well by he's four of five on the year. This will be a 31-yarder. The kicker from Kennesaw, Georgia. Makes it 41-0 with 2.34 to go. Georgia Southern bidding for its 25th straight non-league win here today. You know, genuine college football feel. And shout out to the fans that came and the students and the band. The band, by the way, shout out to the Georgia Southern Eagle Marching Band. One of, one of the best bands I've seen. Hey, let me tell you, this wins the national championship greatest moment in UMass football history. Here is Will Koch taken off down the sidelines, and he is wrestled out of bounds near midfield. Bill, you know who's really happy that UMass football is back playing? Our colleague from ESPN, Rini Ingolia. That is correct. Did you see Koch run down the sideline? Good run. Yeah, Rini's a diehard UMass fan and alum and one of their all-time greats in the Hall of Fame, right? Big time. Big time running back for the Minutemen. Here goes Jared Cole running with the football. and You can sense in the final two minutes. And try to go down here and get themselves on the board and give something to, you know, feel decent about as you get on the plane ride home. 90 seconds and counting. And Will Koch takes off running with the football and gets ahead for three or four on the play. College football is watched. Nacho's party packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Students section. Weston, one of the more scenic places in our country. He hands it off on third down. With 46 seconds to go to Cole, it's going to bring up a fourth down play. One more shot now for UMass, and it's second on the clock. This is just for film, Bill. I mean, they want to see what this guy's got in a real game. Let's see what Will Coke can do. Oh, well, he got the first down and took a pretty good hit. And he'll get up, I hope. Well, he's going to remember his last play. That will do it. Well, congrats to UMass. They got a game in. They got it in. Everybody's happy. They got a little bit of football under their right. belt. Now and they congrats can... to Georgia Southern. They yes. get their 25th straight home win against non-conference. Fun one, partner. Our final score, Georgia Southern 41, UMass nothing. For Dustin Fox, I'm Bill Roth saying so long from Georgia. This has been a presentation of ESPN.